Hello friends, Jason here, and today I want to talk about a question that came up in my last video, One Giant Leap. The question was about asteroids, specifically what can be done once we've located a dangerous asteroid? Do we send a drill team to the asteroid so that we can nuke it? No, that's really a bad idea. Now instead of one giant rock, we've got many radioactive rocks to deal with. So instead, we are going to save the world with mirrors. In this video, we're going to talk about four uses for orbital mirrors that will greatly benefit all of humanity. First of all, we're going to look at using mirrors to redirect dangerous asteroids. Secondly, we will look at how mirrors can be used in photonic propulsion. Thirdly, we're going to look at how mirrors can be used to redirect solar power to solar farms and also to conventional farms. And then finally, we're gonna look at how mirrors can be used to deorbit some of the millions of pieces of space junk that we have orbiting the Earth. Let's get into it. Five research doctors working for NASA's advanced spaceflight projects out of Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama, by the way, is where most American rockets were produced until the recent era. These research doctors wrote this paper nearly 20 years ago. In the abstract here, you can actually see that there are about 2,000 Earth orbit crossing rocks greater than one kilometer in diameter, and there may be as many as 200,000 or more objects in the 100 meter side. Not, not to fear, because there is a solution. These NASA researchers line out the solution pretty nicely for us, so I'll go ahead and read it right here from the paper. They say, by using an intelligent combination of Earth and space-based sensors coupled with an infrastructure of high-energy laser stations and other secondary mitigation options, we can deflect inbound asteroids, meteoroids, comets, and prevent them from striking Earth. This can be accomplished by irradiating the surface of the inbound rock with sufficiently intense impulses so that ablation occurs. This ablation acts as small rock incrementally changing the shape of the rock's orbit around the sun. A one kilometer sized rock can be moved sufficiently in about one month, while smaller rocks in a shorter time span. Researchers recommend that the world's space agencies reprioritize towards creating the space infrastructure that would give multiple options for dealing with asteroids. As they note in the paper here, an asteroid of one to 10 kilometers in diameter could end civilization and possibly all life on Earth. And even a 100 meter asteroid could end civilization as we know it. And as I've mentioned, there are hundreds of thousands of these 100 meter asteroids out there spinning around through Earth's orbit. At 7.40 in the morning on June 30th, 1908, a about 100 meter asteroid blew up over the forest of Tunguska, Siberia, destroying over 2,150 square kilometers of fort. Now, if this would have happened over a city like New York, many millions of people would have died and trillions and trillions of dollars of damage would have occurred. About 30 of these smaller objects each month, smaller in the range of 40 to 80 meters, that pass through the moon's orbit and these provide many opportunities for diagnostics and experimentation with laser ablation. NASA's team suggests that many options are available for where we might put these laser arrays. Based, we could base them on Earth, in low Earth orbit, um, in the Lagrange points, or my favorite, even on the moon. The moon would definitely be a good way to go. The link to the paper is in the description if you want to get into it. These guys really get into the mathematics and the different locations. So if you want to take a deeper look into that, like I said, the link is in the description. And also, uh, in my following video, you will see why I like the moon as an option. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you know when that one comes out. Second thing that mirrors can do for us is photonic propulsion. So here's the article on photonic propulsion, which I will include in the links. It's actually a NASA researcher, Dr. Lubrin, who wrote the paper. And in it, he says that we can send 
100 kilogram packages to Mars from low Earth orbit in just three days. And even larger things like the SpaceX Starship could be sent in less than a month given large enough solar sails and large enough laser mirror arrays. The cool thing about this photonic propulsion is that it's completely scalable. You could send really small wafer size things into to 26% of light speed in just a few minutes, 10 minutes. You could pass the Voyager in just three days, but it's completely scalable. So you can build larger solar sails and more powerful mirror rate laser arrays to send even larger objects. We could send packages to Mars to help support the colonies super quick, like three days once again something that's that's needed can just be sent straight there and yeah we can also send the starship using very large solar sails in under a month the third thing we can do with these space mirrors is redirect solar power so we could extend the effective time of earth-based solar farms we could redirect sunlight from areas where we don't want the sunlight to areas where we'd like to have the sunlight so we could supplement regular farms we could block the Sahara to cut down on the amount of solar radiation that is hitting that area. And this idea of the face mirrors being used to extend solar power is not a novel idea. This guy here, doctor, I'm not sure how to say his name here, came up with this idea in 1978, so even before I was born. In this paper, which will be linked in the description as the third topic, they talk about putting these mirror arrays up 1,000 kilometers up so that they can catch the sunlight and redirect it down on the solar panels in particular for the solar farms, and this would increase the total power production by 60%. And they also note that there are 38 5 gigawatt solar farms on Earth currently, and there's supposed to be several more by 2022. So they would just go ahead and redirect that sunlight to those solar farms. But again, this can be used for other purposes as well. We can actually redirect that sunlight for traditional farms as well, warming up or cooling off particular areas. You might even use mirrors to block the sunlight coming in to the areas where hurricanes are starting to heat up. Many options in that case. The paper goes into a lot of detail on how mirrors would be deployed, how they would be constructed, the gains that would be made and how they would be made. Basically, once the launch costs for sending rockets into space with a payload gets down to about $1,000 per kilogram, then an 18 mirror array would pay itself off in about four and a half years. So take four and a half years once the launch costs get down to $1,000 a kilogram, which SpaceX is going a long way to making happen. And the fourth thing we could do with mirrors in space is actually deorbit some of the space junk. In this article here, they're actually talking about using lasers from Earth to identify the different objects that are out there. And I will put a link in the description to this. We could also use the mirrors in space, these orbital mirrors, to strike these objects and slow them down, change their orbit so that they deorbit and burn up in the atmosphere of Earth. Most of these objects are very small, but they're traveling around on an average speed of over 17,000 miles per hour. And at that speed, even paint can ruin some high-tech space equipment. NASA is tracking many thousands of pieces of space debris. There's been a lot of con collisions in the past. There's been a couple of countries, India, China, who have sent objects into space and then blasted them with their ground-based uh, weapons just to show that they could, which has created a lot more space junk. Yeah, this is a serious problem, but we this is another thing that we can use mirrors in space to take care of. So anyway, those are that's four ideas that I thought of for mirrors in space. There may be other applications as well. Actually, the, the last one there with the orbital debris was something that I just kind of stumbled across after I'd made most of the video. So like I said, there's likely other options. Please let me know if you think of any, or also let me know if there's any other things that you're interested in as far as space exploration. My next video is gonna be about mass drivers on the moon. So look forward to that. So don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for that mass driver video and future videos videos on space exploration. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.